As I've said before, C Sharp and the .NET framework are object oriented. Therefore, it's extremely important to know how to create objects because basically that's all that we are going to use within our code. Since lesson two, we have worked with objects, every string, every number, every Boolean, every character that we have used in our demonstrations have been objects. But those have been easy to create because they have literal values. In order to create a string object, all we have to do is string foo equals a string literal. So hello world. And it's that easy. But most data types aren't this easy to do because they don't have a literal value. Now, easy isn't the right word because... Once you know the pattern of creating an object, you can basically create any object that you want. And, and of course, there are going to be exceptions. But for the most part, you know, once you learn the pattern, you're pretty much set. And it's a really easy pattern. But, you know, you have to know what that pattern is first. So that's what we are going to talk about today is creating objects. And then we're also going to talk about reference types because we've already talked about value types. And now that we are getting into uh, what are called reference types, we need to talk about reference types and how they are handled in memory. So first, let's start off by creating an object, not a string object, but an object of a class. Now, there are multiple terminologies. Uh, you can say that I'm going to create an object of a class. That's perfectly fine. You can also say I'm going to create an instance of a class. That is fine as well. An instance is an object. Now, I typically say I'm going to create an object of a data type because everything in the .NET framework is a data type. But not everything in the .NET framework is a class. There, there's a key distinction because, you know, the integers, the characters, the Booleans, all of those are data types, but they aren't classes. But then we have string, which is a data type, and it's actually a class. So data types are, are a nice broad way of referring to everything in the .NET framework, and then the word class is just a certain type of data type. Well, let's create an object or an instance of a class called String Builder. And just like any other well-named data type, the String Builder class tells you exactly what it does. It builds strings. And you might think, why do we need a String Builder class when we can just concatenate values together to you know, generate a string. Well, concatenation is inefficient. Now, of course, if we have one or two or three little pieces that we concatenate together, that's fine. But if we have many pieces that we need to turn into a larger string, then concatenation can get a little inefficient. So this is where the string builder comes in so that we can append different pieces of data and then basically build the string through the string builder class and it's more efficient than concatenation. So we want to create an object and we want to be able to reference it anytime that we want to. Now, of course, we can create an object and not assign it to a variable. But in doing so, we've basically guaranteed that we can only use that object once because we don't have a way to reference that object after it's created. So we want to create the object and assign it to a variable so that we can reference it any time that we need to. It's basically just like, you know, th what we've done as far as integers and strings and, stu and such. We have created those values, values and assigned them to a variable so that we can reuse it later on in our code. So we create the variable in the same way. We say the data type name, string builder, and then the name of the variable. But then this is where things get a little bit different. We want to say that we want to create a new string builder object. So to do that, we use an operator called new, and then we call the constructor of the string builder class. Now, a constructor is a special method. Um, well, no, it's not a special method. It's like a special method. Uh, we don't have to have an object already to call the constructor, which is why it's special and it's not a method. So the constructor is the same name as the data type. So the constructor name for string builder is 
String Builder. And we can see from IntelliSense, it's automatically prompting us to String Builder because it sees that we are creating a String Builder variable and we have said new. So after typing new and then space, it's saying, okay, you want to create a String Builder variable or a String Builder object, and we do. And then we need to call this constructor, and we do so with the parentheses. Now there's actually different ways that we can call the string builder constructor and those are called overloads and we'll talk about overloads later whenever we are actually writing our own uh, classes so I'm just gonna gloss over overloads here and voila we have created a string builder object and we can use this same pattern to create just about any other type of object for example there's a data type called date time which represents date time it's not a class it's actually called a struct and we will talk about structs after we talk about classes but we can create a date time object in the same way by using the new operator and then calling the constructor now we can actually create date time objects in different ways but this at least shows you that we can reuse this pattern over and over again well we can and will use this pattern over and over again to create objects so there we have it that's how we create objects in C sharp so yay we're done with that we can talk about reference types now if you'll remember from our discussion on value types, value types are stored in memory by their value. So just as a refresher, let's create a variable called x, give it a value of 10. And this does exactly what the code says. We are taking the value of 10 and putting it in the x variable. So x contains 10. Now, it, it's not quite as clear, but the same type of thing happens whenever we create another integer variable and assign it the value of x. But instead of assigning it x, it takes a copy of the value contained within x and assigns it to y. So x and y contain the same value, 10, but they're different copies of that value. Now, reference types are completely different. And every class is a reference type. String Builder is a class, so therefore it is a reference type. I'm going to change this variable to x just so that I can refer to it easier. So with a reference type, whenever we create an object, that object is stored in memory, and then the reference to that memory is assigned to the variable. So in this case, the x variable does not contain the object. It contains the reference to that object. So it's kind of a, a link to the point in memory of where that object resides. Now let's create another string builder variable, y, and let's assign it the value of x. With reference types, we haven't assigned a new value to y. We have taken the reference contained within X and assigned that same reference to Y. So X and Y point to the same spot in memory where our object resides. So let's see how this actually works. We have two variables that are pointing to the same object. So we can do something like this. Let's do X append and and we are going to build a string using the string builder class and let's do hello comma space and then let's use the y variable append and the uh, append is the method used to uh, append data to the string and then whenever we call the to string method on the string builder object it's going to take all all of the pieces that we appended to it and then generate a string from that but for right now we're just going to you know add strings to it and then we need to display the output so console write line and then x to string so let's see what this runs I know what this is going to do this is going to output hello world and that is because the X and the Y variables are pointing to the same object. So any change that we make to X is going to be seen in Y. 
any change we see or any change we make in y is going to be seen in x. Now we didn't have to use x here. We could have used y and gotten the same results because x and y are pointing to the same object and they will continue to do so until we assign a new value to either of those variables. And remember that C Sharp is a statically typed language, and that means once we have a string builder variable, we can only assign a string builder object to that variable. Or can we? We actually have a special value called null, and I'm going to assign null to x. Null is essentially a null object, and it's saying at first, you know, x contains a reference in memory to our stream builder object and then whenever we assign it null it doesn't contain that reference anymore it just contains nothing so x is a null object now and null can only be used with reference types it cannot be used with value types so int foo equals null we will get a red squiggly here and it will say that it cannot convert null to an int because int is not a nullable value even though value types are objects, they are special types of objects in that they're not containing a reference of a reference in memory to the object, they are containing the value itself. So they are special and they cannot be assigned null. However, you can create a nullable value type by just using a question mark use the data type int in this case followed by a question mark and then you've created a nullable int so we can assign null to that int now and that's extremely helpful whenever we're working with databases and uh, working with nullable fields okay so we have assigned null to x x is null so let's go ahead and let's try to write that to our console let's change this to y so that we first see what x is or i'm sorry we'll change it to x so that we'll see what x contains then we'll set x to null then we'll try to write x again to see what it contains and then we will write y and now this actually isn't going to work we are going to get what's called an exception an exception is an error in our code and we can see that this is unhandled exception and we're going to talk about exceptions later on uh, because it's a it, it's an extremely important topic that needs to be covered so we will cover them but this is saying that there is a null reference exception every exception has a name of some kind even if it's just plain exception in this case it's saying that we're using null here we have a null reference but we're trying to use it as an object let's close program and look at our code and we are doing that here we have x which is null now but we are trying to use it just as if it were a regular string builder object which it's not it's null so we're trying to use a two string method on a null object and we are getting an exception for that so whenever we talk about exception handling and things like that we will need to take that into account because there are going to be circumstances when we are working with data that for some reason is going to be null and there's really no way that we can plan for that except to handle those exceptions but we'll talk about exception handling later so we need to get rid of this two string and in this case we can because the right line method is going to take whatever value we give it and try to convert it into a string and a null object is going to basically convert into an empty string so whenever we run this code again we are going to see x being written and then we're going to see x be written again after we've assigned it to null but in this case it's going to be a blank blank line blank line and then we are going to write y which is going to be hello world so let's run it and we have hello world and then a blank line and then hello world again so we finally got to reference types today and I'm so glad because it's such an important topic because you can end up changing an object without really meaning to and that's something that we will see whenever we work with methods 
in the next couple of days because tomorrow we are going to start writing our own classes. And uh, that's always exciting because that's when we really get to customize our code and really start to write robust applications. But the whole reference type thing is important because we will have methods that will accept data that is an object, a reference type, and we could inadvertently change that object without really meaning to. So it's important to know that difference, and I'm glad that you know we have finally gotten to that difference. So as I said, tomorrow we will start writing our own class. We will talk about uh, just some of the basic stuff, namespaces and all that, and uh, I hope you're looking forward to that because, because it, it is exciting stuff. So have a good rest of the day. I will see you tomorrow.